everybody welcome back to another episode of simply a professional i'm your host webby joining me tonight we have my wonderful co-host devin devin how you doing i'm great how about you devin we're doing this a little differently this week we're actually on camera with each other because oh. we, ju- we just watched a movie together we did uh so we watched the shining because i have not seen the shining before this yep. is my first time, and you wanted to gauge kind of my reactions to certain things. So I, I do have a question right out the gate. Yes. Having seen my reactions to different parts of this movie, uh, what was your favorite, I guess, reaction? Uh, my favorite reaction for you was probably when the kid um, was, like, really going deep into the um, – God, what's – I mean, you just watched it. What's the – alter ego's name tony tony there you go and the tony's voice you're just like nope nope Nope. (laughs) um also i don't know if this is going to do this the whole time if i talk really loud i can hear myself through your end there you go all right so as as i said this is my first time seeing the shining and i know it's an, it's a much older movie. It was what uh, mid eighties, early eighties, eighty, 1980. Okay, okay, early eighties. Um, and going into it, I did know a lot of, you know, the pop culture references. Yeah, and there it. is a lot in that movie. Oh, there are. Um, there were still some scenes that that kind of caught me off guard that I I didn't know. And that you didn't warn me about, uh, like the naked chick in the tub. Did didn't see that coming. Uh, I had a feeling when there was somebody actually in the tub, and the naked lady got out, and you know she was like seducing Jack. I had a feeling she was gonna be something different, like some old hag or whatever. That scene was actually referenced in um, uh, what's the video game movie? Which what? Which one? Was it Ready Player One? Ready Player One. Oh, remember there? It's the one door they open up. Like before they go into the ballroom to get the final piece in, in like the, in like the shining ballroom, mm-hmm. um, one of the doors is open and all the guys keep poking their head in there, getting like mesmerized because they're supposed to be like the naked woman in the room. All right. all getting mesmerized, and then the girl walks over. She's like, "Have you never read the shining?" And they all just like close the door and move all on. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. That's okay. Yeah, that's where I do vaguely remember some of these uh, these these references from was was ready player one um but yeah i figured it'd be like some old hag or something did not realize it was gonna be like a a waterlogged fucking old hag i mean (laughs) makes sense she was in a tub i guess um the blood part i mean that's been referenced a lot before so i kind of knew about the blood coming out of the elevator thing um still that's a lot of blood i don't understand um, I feel like the beginning part, and I feel this way a lot, like with the older movies, but the beginning of the movie was slow. Uh, um, well, that's also too very reminiscent of, of like a Kubrick film, mm-hmm. um, where it starts off almost more like a drama or almost more like a, you know, it's setting up to be like a, uh, well, I guess a drama would be the, the, the best term setting up to be a drama and then slowly but surely it get it builds into that horror 
and then it kind of goes and it keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. See, but I do have a question for you, though, because one of the things that got me, like, with that movie is that I don't even find that movie to be scary anymore. Like, I find it to be, like, sure, if you watch it when you're, like, 10, like, 5 or 10, maybe, you're scared out about it. But I don't really find the movie scary. I definitely do find it to be the music and the atmosphere, I think, definitely set a bar for right. I, I was gonna. Forward. I was going to say... I do understand why it's, I guess it's classified as a horror because you do have the wax wielding Jack at the end. I wouldn't consider it necessarily a horror more than I would like a, like a suspense thriller. Uh, and the, I think that's, that's part of what you, you, you brought up is like the, the music and the ambiance of it in general, just like it, it, it builds that suspense just in the back of your mind, even when something's not happening, they have that music going on and it just gets your heart pumping. Like it's like, you have a couple okay. like false starts where like you're thinking something's about to happen. You're like, okay, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Like you hear the music and then there's no payoff. Right. And then they'll do it again and there's no payoff. And then the third time they'll do it and there is a payoff. And you're like, Oh, cause like in your head, you're like, Oh, it's going to be nothing again. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, so I definitely would classify this more as like a suspense thriller kind of movie. Um, I'm still really confused. Now you've read the book, and I know it was a while ago, but let's start with real quick. Let's just start with how did you like it overall? Okay. Um, eh. I mean, again, I I think knowing a lot of the pop culture references and not having seen it over the like ever before uh mm-hmm. over so long that i guess the movie was ruined for me but at the same time i mean people can't really ruin movies for me like seeing it i'm glad i'm, I'm glad i saw it finally it was worth watching i probably wouldn't go out of my way to watch it again unless i was watching it with somebody who also hasn't seen it before so <clears throat> I definitely, yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't mind seeing, like like you said, there's like a sequel or a continuation or something Yeah, there's a sequel that's coming out. Um, it may already be out, but I think it's coming out soon. I, I wouldn't mind seeing week. that, because like then it's new, you know, there's different references and stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, like I said, like when, when what, what's her name? Uh, Wendy? When Wendy walked into that big open area where Jack had his typewriter... And she had her baseball bat with her, and she was going to go have her conversation with her husband. Uh, and that's like where Jack finally really snapped. That is where the movie, and that was like two hours into the movie, essentially. That's where the movie decided to pick up for me. It was at that point I was like, oh, all right, this shit's getting interesting. Now Jack's like, he's finally, you know, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Uh, now now let's get into this. Well, that was, that's kind of it, so... The way I, the more I've seen the movie, I really grow to kind of appreciate that. Because not only do you have like the little jump scares that build suspense in between all that, the whole like hour and the first hour and a half of the movie serves as a suspense build to really the last like 20, 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. You start getting these really weird things like Jack slowly going more and more crazy, which again, all this is very different from the book. Um, which I can get into after this, but I mean, they're at the end of the day, they're both two very different movies or two very different things. Um, but, and there's, you know, and that's kind of the reason why Stephen King is not a fan of the movie, but I do enjoy the movie. And I also really enjoy the book for different reasons because they, they, they're actually kind of different, but I'm cool with what we got. All right. Now let's go into, I guess what, what some of the major differences were, between the book and the movie? Well, there's a couple of huge ones. Um, let's start with... You know, let's just go to a simple list here. I pulled it up. So let's just go to a simple list. Pull up the top ten differences. There's more differences. Pull up the top ten differences. Um, so first thing in the book, his uh, his rampage was not with an axe. It was a croquet mallet. Yeah, but he wouldn't have been able to do as much damage to those doors with a croquet mallet. Well, that never happened. Oh, okay. Um... 
Also, too, that kind of alludes to why you said, "Yeah, I, I want to bash your brains in." Well, at the when time, you, well, at the time that he said that, she was holding a baseball bat. And he she was, was holding the bat, he, right, right, right. But I mean, that me. actually, yeah. I mean, it made so, sense in the movie. Yeah, I mean, it worked in the movie too. Um, there's no hedge maze in the book. Well, that's bullshit. Well, I really, I really is, enjoyed that scene. The the thing about this is though, too, the book is much heavier leaning into supernatural. So Jack in this movie is already kind of crazy, and the house in isolation makes him more crazy. Okay. The book, very much, it's spirits and things happening around the house and things bumping in the night that are slowly that slowly drive him insane. So okay. you have this feeling that the house or the hotel is in fact haunted and drives people insane. Um, now, can I ask a question about the book? Yes. Now, they allude in the movie to him not sleeping very well, but almost every scene that we see Jack in, he's sleeping. <laughs> yes. Uh, like, the, he, he gets breakfast in bed, and it's 11.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, he gets locked in the pantry, and he falls asleep on the sacks of salt. In the book, is it mainly him going mad because of sleep deprivation? Like, is that in a, the book, is it's that a him big going sign? He's asleep, but there's actually things happening in the house. So, like, if I'm not mistaken, like, it's been a while. There's one scene in the book where he's, like, dead asleep, and he hears, like, music and stuff playing in the ballroom. And he right. goes down there, and there's nothing. Like, he wakes up dead asleep. He's the only one that hears it, wakes up, goes downstairs, and looks around, and there's nothing there. And every time he tries, and it's like, it's one of those things where he just keeps going on and on and on and on, on where it does build up to be sleep deprivation as mm -hmm. part of it. But it's... Definitely supernatural presence that's doing right. it to him. Right. As opposed to in the movie, it's kind of just alluded to it's just being sleep deprivation and kind of the isolation. Well, I don't know, because, I mean, there were definitely points in the movie watching where I was like, okay, are, are these ghosts? Like, were there actual spirits right. in the hotel? But see, that's the thing. They lean very much heavily into, in the movie that he is kind of already on the fringe of sanity. Right. And the isolation did it. And he starts maybe seeing these hallucinations and the son is experiencing because he's, you know, he's, he's, um he's one of the shining. He's, he's sensitive to all that. He's experiencing kind of the after ripple effects of what his father's experiencing. So that's kind of what they're leaning into. So, but I mean, but like for instance, in the movie, in the they're in the movie though. They're they were spirits, correct? Because even the mother started seeing them at the end. Somebody had to have let him out of the pantry because he was yeah. locked in that pantry. Yeah. yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just not as much in terms of specifically what drives him crazy. Right. It's just him. Like they, yeah, they lean yeah. more heavily into that, which kind of makes it more of the psychological thriller. Okay, I got gotcha. you. The yeah, um, and for instance, too, like the hedge maze in the book, at the end of it all, is not a hedge maze. It's a garden with topiary animals, and the animals actually come to life and actually harass Jack, um, and prevent him from hurting the kid. Now, are you talking like you said they're they're what kind of animals? They're like the hedge, like the hedge animals. Like they're yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, they actually like in the book, like there's more, like they actually come to life. And, and they protect, mess with they, him and they mess. protect the kid. Well, I, I can't remember. It's, it's, it's one of those two. It's, it's, it's been a minute. Um, it's either they protect the kid or they're trying to stop the kid. One of the two. Now, yeah. in the in the book, does the kid have powers? Yeah, that's all the same. Over yeah, but can he control any of this? Uh, I believe. Like what? It's... What benefit does the kid have having these powers? <laughs> I believe it's alluded to later, or I think it might be in Doctor Sleep, where he has more control over his powers. Um, because it it looked here. it looked to me like the, like we, we find out in the movie anyway that the cook also shares these powers. Yeah, and he but, has more experience with them. But the thing is, is this kid. It seems like these powers are just a hindrance. It it just seems like they're a detriment to him, and that they're well, not really doing anything. Yes and no, because you could say that Tony is a manifestation of his powers, and saved his life at the end. Woke him up, got his mom to wake up, wake up, for old dad came bursting in the room there. So I mean, 
I guess, it's, yeah. It allows him to see shit, but it, seeing shit allows him to stay safe. All right. Um, also, too, brought the black guy back there. His powers were allowing him to communicate, brought the black guy back there so they could get a way, a way to be to get to actually get away. Um, because they took his his uh, snow crawler yep. out of there. Yep. So, um, in the book, the haunted room uh is two seventeen, not two thirty seven. The change was made at the request of of the management at the Timberland Lodge where the movie was shot as they didn't want guests to be afraid of room 217, and the hotel doesn't actually have a room 237. Okay. Makes sense. Not the huge major change, but a change. Now, Um, do you think in this day and age that if they had kept it room 217, that would have made more of a draw for that hotel? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I I I think more more people would have gone there and requested specifically room 217. I want the shining room. Uh, also, too, this is the part where it's going to be like, really? Uh, many of the film's most iconic scenes and lines are not in the book, um, including the twins. They don't exist in the book. Really? Okay. Yeah, you got me on that one. Shit. The elevator filled with blood doesn't exist in the book. Uh, the And the endless pages that just say all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Um, that They don't exist in the book. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, here's Johnny doesn't exist in the book. He doesn't burst in like here's Johnny. Um, wow, because yeah, those are some of the more uh, iconic scenes. Icon- like, yeah, and the, and kind of like not the memed scenes, but like the they serve as inspiration for a lot of other things out there. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, they're they're not in the book. Um, but in the book, Danny's invisible friend Tony has a much bigger role. In King's novel, Tony appears in physical form, and it's ultimately revealed he's actually an older version of Danny attempting to warn him, warn himself about the impeding danger he faces. That's fucked up. All right. Future Danny. And he's a real person. Future Danny that lives in Danny's mouth? Well, no, he doesn't live in his mouth. He's actually a person. He's actually, like, has a physical form in the book, but only, only Danny can see him. Because, and then towards he, the end of because the book, he has the shining. Yeah, and then towards later in the book, like towards the end of the book, he starts being more prevalent. Like I think the mom even catches a glimpse of him towards the end of it. But yeah. So I wonder if the the new movie coming out is going to be older Danny having to go back and warn his younger Danny self. <laughs> they just redo the same movie. Yeah, um, yeah. The director did say he's going to try to bridge some of the gaps between the book and the movie. Okay. To try to you know. A, appease both fans but what happened if what happens if danny okay so danny goes through right and he has older danny aka tony with him and then danny dies and then no what happens if younger danny grows up and then doesn't go back to save his younger self we're getting into time travel and we're not doing that <laughs> you're breaking like rule 15 of the show Dude, I don't. All I'm saying is, if I ever got time visited, travel makes Webby's head hurt. If I ever got visited by older me to save a certain aspect of my life, I'd be like, "Yo, what year is it that you just came from, and how old are you, so I know when to come back here and do this shit all over again?" <laughs> like, I don't want to. I don't want to create one of them loops, man. I need to know. These are yep. important facts. Yep. But yeah, also in the book, uh, Wendy Torrance is, uh, she's not the submissive shrinking Violet as she's portrayed, the Violet she's portrayed in the book. Um, for instance, in the book, she's blonde. She's described to have, as having like, uh, supermodel looks <laughs> and she's, okay. and she's very assertive. Um, she's, a, she actually goes kind of head to head with what's his name a couple Jack. of times and argue, you know, Jack a couple of times with arguments. Okay. Um, yeah, in the book, the Overlook Hotel is more al- alive. Um, it's not just like them. That's what I meant by saying it's more supernatural in the book. Like, it's not just them in the house and seeing sporadic things. Like, things are actually happening. Like, it's more of a haunted hotel. Things are actually happening around them. Like, they're walking around, you know, things and doors are slamming and oh, man, they that don't know be, why. That'd be creepy. Yeah, doors are slamming, or like you walk in, you know, you turn around, there's nothing on the counter, you turn back around, and something's there, or something's gone. Yeah. Or like, you know, you cut into fresh cabbage, and there's just maggots falling out of the fresh oh, Like, the house is more alive. Oh. Like, stuff is like that, that. Is that an actual scene in the book? I don't know. I just, that came off the top of my head. But uh, shit like that, more, more stuff like that. Damn it, you had to. 
I hate rice now. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jack Torrance is a more nuanced, complex anti-hero in the book. Wait, what? Yeah, he's he's a he's not as like Stonewall batshit crazy as early as he is in in the movie. Okay. Like you already can see in the movie, like yeah, he's going crazy. Right. In the book, it's much more subtle. Well, it's easy, okay, it's easier to see him going crazy in the movie though. Because also, he's because played Jack, Nicholson Jack Nicholson is fucking amazing. Yeah. Jack Nicholson is fucking amazing. Like, yeah. yeah, it makes sense. You look at Jack Nicholson, you automatically assume crazy man. Now, this is where it's going to be interesting. Because, um, but how, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, how is he an anti hero in the movie though, or in the book? Ah, uh, I'm trying to remember. I think he realizes what's happening, or he's trying to stop what's happening. Like, he realizes, I think at a certain point, he realizes the house is doing something, and he's he, he tries to stop it, but loses, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, All like, right. I think he tries, like, I think. I think they made the reference to burning, like trying to burn, like something trying to burn down. The house. I think he tried to burn down the house at one point to like save his family, and it didn't work out. <laughs> okay, or something like that. I can't remember. It is literally, it's been it's been almost ten years at this point. Um, but yeah. So, uh, Mr. Dick Halloran, also known as Scatman Carruthers, ever forever known as Scatman Carruthers. <laughs> Great name, by the way. D D and D worthy name, Scatman Carruthers. D yep. He's definitely gonna... like a shifty, like a shifty gnome or like a shifty, like dwarven. Dude, like we got to make a D and D character, an NPC now. His name's going to be scat man. And... No, dude, dude. That's thing two's real name. Huh? Oh no. That's, that's Mark Chaka Thunder's real name. <laughs> yeah. Mark Chaka Thunder's just his code name. Well, no, well, just... we got to make him a different character. Well, no, I guess it can be Mark. Yeah. All right. Cause I got to say, we got to say that he's somebody that Tez knows. It's just, He's one of Tez's contacts, yeah. I know a guy. It's got man Carruthers, so I know a guy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so he actually doesn't die in the book. And actually, he's a, he's a central, very important character in Doctor Sleep. Okay. So I'm curious to see how they're going to make that work. And I'm pretty sure that depending on which canon they're using, cause they, they basically said they're going to follow the book, but they're going to acknowledge the movie happened for the new movie. Because okay. at the end of the book, Jack just dies pretty much the opposite way that he died in the movie. He burns to death? He froze to death in the movie. Um, in the movie, he freezes to death. In, in the movie, he freezes to death. In the book, him going crazy, he wasn't maintaining the boiler like he should have been. And the wife actually locks him in the room with the boiler and the thing explodes and blows like a chunk out of the hotel with him and kills him. Oh, alright. Like, the boiler explodes. Um... Hmm. So he dies pretty much the exact opposite way of... I think the most surprising scene for Webby, though, was the guy in the dog costume. Yeah, I did not see that coming. I, I also didn't <laughs> see a point to it, but hey, I, it's weird shit was happening. So. It was shit like that that was happening throughout the book the whole time. Like, you know what I mean? Yep. Like, it was shit like that. Like, they open up rooms and people are in these rooms doing shit, and they're like... I didn't even see that. And they like and they would write it off a few times like, oh, you know, we're just it's just the it's the, it's the isolation getting to us. Yeah, yeah. It's yep. Fucked up. Yep. So let me see what else. Please. Elevator's not in the book. Hedge maze. Yep, here, here's Johnny's not in the book. Was Tub Girl in the book? She was in the book. All right. And the ball. And his name is actually not Jack in the book. I forgot. His name is John. Oh, is that why he yells, Here's Johnny in the movie? Is to give a nod towards the book? Yeah. His name is actually John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. No. <laughs> um, it is his real name. John, 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 John. They changed the last names too in the in the movie. It's not Torrance. It's the, the last name is the same, but he he has like a middle name. That's oh. what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I knew he has like a middle name in the, in the book. Like it's like John Daniel Edward, and he goes by Jack for short because in the eighties Jack and John were uh, a thing. Okay. Yep. So in the movie, or or actually in the book, is. Is like the ballroom scene, like where he he sees everybody having a party, essentially 
does that all happen? Yes. Yes. Okay. All that happens. That happens. Him sitting at the bar happens. Now, the twist at the end of the movie, the, the one that I, I mentioned that I did, that I liked. So at the end of the movie, spoilers, by the way. I, fuck, if you know what? If you haven't seen The Shining, I don't care. This is my first I mean, time. I mean, what do you fear? You haven't seen The Shining. Yeah. Until like two hours ago. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, so at the end of the movie... You know, he has this conversation with uh, some some waiter guy that he calls Jeeves, and then he tells him the waiter tells him his name, and it's the name that he was told by the employer of a person that you know killed his family in the hotel who had this job several years back or whatever, and he has this conversation in the bathroom, and then the butler guy essentially says, "No, man, you're the caretaker. You've always been the caretaker here." You know. And at the end of the movie, once, you know, Jack dies, it zooms in on one of the picture frames from 1924 of a 4th of July party at the ballroom, and it zooms in, and Jack's right in the front row. Um, Now, did anything like that happen in the book? Like, was there, like, some sort of weird, like, mind mind twist or or twist ending in in the end of the book? Um, I believe it was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was for the movie. I'm trying to double check my. I believe it actually was. Now, am are we to believe it based off the movie that that was really Jack who was there in that picture in 1924, and he's always been part of this hotel, or was it one of his family members? Like, has his family always been the caretaker of this hotel? And it just kind of runs in the family that he's fucking mm-hmm. insane? No, I mean, because that would have made more sense, like, if it was, like, family wise. I think it was just one of those things, like... Now that he's died at the hotel, he's, he's been there. a part of the hotel. Uh, like, sure. or I think it was more of, like, an embracing of the fact that he is, in fact... um, You know, like... He had like he he became a part of the house, like right. while he was there. So it's like he's the now caretaker, a permanent resident. The caretaker, as in you, the caretaker, have you've always been the caretaker, right? It was like the house taking ownership of him. Like you, you were always the caretaker. Am I? Am I that's the way I look at it. I again, like there, I did a whole paper this back in the day, but so now, I mean, so based off that theory, now we're 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 led to believe that everybody in that party everybody in those photos have been people who have died in this hotel died in the hotel or have their spirit attached to the hotel to some degree yeah yeah okay yeah. That, okay that makes sense yep I mean, i'm gonna roll with that for now sure I, you know I, I would love to sit down and like redo not redo my paper but like sit down and like reanalyze the movie again because it's, it's been a while like an actual like long form <laughs> um because it's, it's, it's been a while and I do like compare and contrast from that in the book, but yeah, you know who yeah. you know who'd know all about the book is my mom. She's a huge Stephen King fan. I mean, I love Stephen King too, but I just haven't got around to uh, watching this recently. Like me, so I, I like like I like the, like the Dark Tower movie that came out with Idris Elba. She did not. She did not. Because it's so different from the book. Yeah, she did not it's like it. So different from the book. So she should check out. Um, does she like Stephen King for Stephen King, or does she like Stephen King for like the horror aspect? I think she's just a big fan of Stephen King in general. If she hasn't read it, she should check out the Bill How the Bill Hodges Bill Hodges trilogy. All right, That's my recommendation. There you go. Mom. Also, there's a show listen. about it. Um, there's a show out there. Uh it's hard to find only because it's only on through AT and T. Um, they like their their Spectrum streaming service. But uh, Mr. Mercedes is the first book. Mr. Mercedes Finders Keepers and End of Watch, all three. I enjoyed them a lot. They're like Stephen King's take on like crime and like true crime drama. But then towards the ending, you come back into that Stephen King like supernatural field twist that's pretty cool yeah Yeah, it's 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 pretty good i really enjoyed it you know 
I've tried reading Stephen King books before. Like they're right. hard. Here, they here, can be hard. Here's my it, issue. It, it's a slog. Here's my issue. Uh, I want to say it was in eighth grade. I started trying to read it. Okay. Now, no joke, Devin. This book is this fucking thick. Okay. I know. I know. I. Uh, that was. See, a lot of those books are one of those books where I will audiobook it and follow along with the actual. Book. See, that I would probably try to do more is try to get these on audiobook now. But I tried reading Stephen King's It. Made it to page 54. I have not made it past page 54 to this day. I just, I, I can't pull myself. I mean, I, I look at it and it's like, it's, it's like, wow, uh, I barely made a dent in this book. That's a very daunting task. I don't have time for this. <laughs> I will say this. Once you get past the first like 120 pages in that book, the rest is kind of easy to go through. Oh, I'm sure. But I mean, have you seen the movie? The movies? I've seen the original. I mean, the original and even the newer one. Like, have you seen the movies? You've seen the book. I mean, you read the book, kind of, sort of. Like, there is some key differences, but some of the stuff they left out, I don't really miss. Right. Um, it's fine. Like, um, for obvious reasons, they left out the child orgy. Well, at the end of that book, there is a child orgy. And like they don't at the end of that book, they don't cut their fingers and make and make a promise to come back. They all in succession have uh, sex with a girl. <clears throat> yeah, her idea, by the way. Well, um, it's very interesting. So she's the town whore. No, she. It's in so Stephen, Mister Stephen King's uh, def, reason why he did it. He said it, it, it was kind of them showing. That they graduated from being kids, like they're no longer like they did. They dealt with this. So the girl, thing. so the girl in it steps up and she's like, "Hey, we dealt with this shit. You're not boys anymore. Today you're men." Basically, have, have that's my, kind of how it have was. my it vagina. Was, it was much more endearing, but basically, <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, All that's right, book in it. And that's that, fucked and, up. And that, and that's kind of the reasoning why it's never been like truly adapted because for reasons for obvious reasons like you can't put that on 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 a show. I mean, not today I mean, anyway. Not today. You anyway. can al- you can allude like, even back in the day they didn't do it. They were uh, like, no, we're good. Yeah, I think my favorite Stephen King, uh, like movie or TV movie, I'm Maximum not Overdrive. Really Maximum Overdrive. For okay, me. Maximum for Overdrive. Me. Is really Come good. on, <laughs> for me. For me, okay, I'll tell you this. That's my favorite movie. If you, I'm talking, you, like, you can't beat the Green Goblin. If I'm truck. talking, if I'm talking miniseries, it has to probably be as much as I love Rose Red, and I love Rose Red because Rose Red at points is actually kind of scary. Um, never seen. Can't, it. I haven't seen it in a long time, but I've never it, seen it. If I'm not mistaken, it's it's kind of scary. I uh, hear like in certain parts, like like got me as a kid. I remember the Langoliers. I fucking love the Langoliers. Never, it's stupid. Never, never even heard of it. Oh man, the Devin, Langoliers. Devin, is... Devin's gonna be looking shit up for me now. <laughs> the Langoliers, I, I want to show you the beautiful CGI that is the Langoliers, and this is not. I shit you not. This is not an image from like a fucking like someone edit this image in. This is legitimately a, a scene from the mo- from the movie. Wait, what? Hold on. That's I legitimately see, a, scene a bunch from of the teeth. movie. Is, wait, That's are, legitimately a scene from the movie. Are those a bunch yeah. of mouths? They are dimensional eating mouths. Yes, they look a little bit better in motion than that. That picture, like here. What's here with you all go. the black? What's with all the blackness? Are they? They're eating literally the sky? eating the dimension. They're eating that that whole dimension. Like it's. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah, like they just eat everything. So the whole point, the whole premise of the Langoliers is everybody on this flight. It starts off on a flight. And everybody's on this flight, and they they wake up, you know, they land, and they're at a empty terminal, like they're in an empty airport. It's completely empty. They're like, okay, did we crash? No. Okay. They get out. They have like no. This is before cell phones. So like phones don't work. They're walking around the airport. 
if I'm not mistaken, like the food's not fresh or like it is fresh. I can't remember. It's like they're around this airport, like their voices are echoing weird. Everything's different. Mr. Toomey's going crazy. Gotta love the guy. Gotta love Mr. Toomey because there's like a little, um, she's like a blind chick who's like, oh, she's like a blind girl. She's like 13. And she's always saying, Mr. Toomey, Mr. Toomey. And it's it's pretty funny. Um, here's Mr. Toomey right here. Good old Mr. Toomey. Oh, it's it's Balky from Perfect yeah. Strangers or whatever. Yeah. I mean, here's All a... Right. Here's a better... Here's a more picture when when you know Mr. Toomey is no longer sane. Balky Bartokamus or something like that. That's how oh, you know Mr. Wow, Toomey right. is no longer sane. <laughs> all right. He looks kind of evil there. I mean, yeah, yeah, he's no longer sane. He gets hit in the face with a toaster. Man, he'd make a good Riddler, I think. Yeah. He gets hit in the face with a toaster, which is kind of cool. Okay. <laughs> Well, to stop him, somebody take they take a toaster and throw it in a bed sheet. Like they find like a linen cart at the hotel, or sorry, at the airport they find like a linen cart or like a towel cart or whatever, and they throw a toaster from like the food court in there and spin it around and turn it into a fucking mace. He walks around the corner and just crack him over the head with his toaster. And I'm like, I mean, it, it's effective. It worked. It's funny, but it worked. I mean, it, was one of those, like, it was one of those industrial like stainless steel toasters, so you like, you know that bitch was heavy. It was pretty funny. Uh, anyway, the, the Langoliers, the, Langoliers is, huh? the Langoliers is both stupid and amazing at the same time. If I'm not mistaken, it's also kind of a long thing. It's like because it's is it, just, is it just one episode. I feel like it's long. Maybe I'm lying. It's 180 minutes, so yeah, it's, it's kind of long. It's three hours. It's a mini series. Um. But yeah, yeah, it's great. It's great in the best, worst way. Well, maybe I'll have to watch this. I've never even heard of this. <clears throat> I mean, that is something I, that's another thing I will watch with you because I can. So to date, I love the Langoliers. To date. Yes. I might actually be missing some now. The Stephen King movies that I can remember seeing. Okay. I've seen Pet Cemetery. I'll never oh, see it. I'll never see it again. Yeah, you watched the new one or not? No. I've seen Maximum. Are we counting just movies or are we counting movies and TV shows? Uh, uh, I guess both. Sure. We'll count both. I don't think I've seen any Stephen King TV shows. But uh, I've seen Pet Cemetery, the original, just the first one. I've seen Maximum Overdrive. Okay. I have now seen The Shining. I've seen Cujo. Was that was that Stephen King? That was Stephen King. Okay. Uh, I already feel like I'm missing one that I just mentioned. Oh, I've seen the original It movie. Yep. Which was a miniseries. And that's all I've seen. Part miniseries. All right. Well, let me run you through. Uh, you probably have seen some stuff you didn't realize was Stephen King. It was Car- was Shaw- was you Carrie seen the Shawshank Redemption? I have seen Shawshank. That, that was Shawshank Stephen King? Redemption. Stephen King. Oh, I did not realize that. Originally a Stephen King book. Actually, it's funny enough. Is it's they don't come out and say it. Um, but there's a show on Castle Rock on um Hulu, and the prison that is there is called Shawshank Prison. So yeah. it's like alluded yeah. that it could be that, could not be that. The Shawshank Redemption. Carrie is actually his first movie. Okay, I have so seen the order. Re- I've seen the uh, the remake of Carrie. I've not seen. Okay. The, so, I've not so seen the original. movies, not including shows, but movies in order. You have Carrie, which came out in 1976, the original. You have The Shining, which is 1980. You have Creep Show, which I don't think um, I've seen that one. Based on these aren't all directed by him. These are all um, based off his work. Right. So you have like Creep Show. Which is based off weeds in the crate. Um, the rest, oh, so you have short stories in Creep Show, which is kind of like a movie version of Tales from the Crypt. Okay. Um, and he has weeds in the crate that are in there. Uh, Cujo, you have the Dead Zone. I haven't seen that. And the Dead Zone's actually kind of cool. They remade it. I actually really liked the Dead Zone. That was actually pretty solid. And the remake wasn't that bad. Uh, Christine, 
I haven't seen that it. Was that about, was the car. That was the movie about the car. Yeah, yep. I haven't seen that one. Children of the Corn. Haven't seen that. You wouldn't like it. Uh, probably. Yeah, there's children. Uh, in, there's children in the corn. I'm, um, dude. We all heard. The bitch came out the, the bitch corn. Came out the corn. All right. We all see. We we've heard this. I I do not handle well things coming out of cornfields. <laughs> okay. Fire starter. I don't think I've seen that. Um, cat's eye. Nope. Silver bullet. Nope. I don't think I, I haven't seen Silver, Silver Bullet. Maximum Overdrive is yep. 1986. I've seen Best that. Best movie ever. Stand by, me. <laughs> Stand by Me? Uh, I don't think so. I feel like you've seen Stand By Me. Cast. Yeah, with Will Whedon. Fucking, Will Whedon uh, was in that movie? Yep. River Phoenix was in that movie. Hold on. What's the movie uh, about? Give me a, a real quick. Corey Feldman was in that movie. Stand by me. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. Okay. I have seen this movie. Yeah. That's Stand with, all the, with based... all the kids on the train track. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It based on the body. Uh, Creep Show Two. He had the raft on there. No, um, I haven't seen that. He had the he had the Running Man. He had the Running Man. Uh, I haven't seen that. With Schwarzenegger? Yeah. Nope. You've never seen Arnold Schwarzenegger, The Running Man? Nope. Oh, dude, we gotta watch that. That's just that, that's a Schwarzenegger movie. Hey, I don't know. come on. Sorry. I mean, that's just, it what? I mean, it's no Kindergarten Cop, but it's it good. kind of it, Schwarzenegger movies kind of went down for me after, um, the fuck was the name of the movie now? The Christmas one. No, the one where the he's out, man? No, I, the one where he's out in outer space and the chick has three boobs. Oh, Total Recall. Total Recall. Yep. This was before Total Recall. So, I almost certain I spelled his name so wrong. But uh, let's see, filmography. We're getting off in the weeds, people. But that's okay. I don't <laughs> care. Film. Don't worry, everybody. We're going to be getting back to Stephen King movies, so you can do your mental checklist and laugh yes. at how many movies. So for somebody, movie, so, for somebody who takes so, pride in the fact that I've seen lots of movies and I'm a movie quote unquote movie not buff, much Stephen King, apparently. but you don't like horror I don't movies. Like horror so movies I understand. So, yeah, keep that. So uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's first movie was Hercules in New York. Yep, I actually, I've seen. I haven't seen the movie. I've seen clips of that movie, and it is horrendous. <laughs> the long goodbye. Um, he was in that. Uh, let me see. Stay hungry, pumping iron nope. himself. Scavenger hunt. He was Lars. Conan the Barbarian was his first like successful movie. Yep. Conan the Destroyer, then Terminator. Yep. Then he was in Red Sonia as Lord Calador. Mm-hmm. Um, he was in Commando. Yep. Where he raw deal. A, he ripped a wall off of a place. Yes. It was insane. Raw deal. Predator, yep. The Running Man, there we go, Red Heat, Twins, which is the most underrated. I've seen, I've seen most of, of the, I've seen most of these movies. I have not seen Running Man. You need to see Running Man. Total Recall was, yeah, it was three movies before Total Recall. <gasps> Kindergarten Cop, Terminator 2, Judgment It's not Day, a Puma. <laughs> Dave, Last Action Hero. Oh, I love Last Action Hero. True Lies. Devin, please tell me you've seen Last Action Hero. I've seen Live Action Last Action Hero so many times. All right, good. Eraser. Uh, Jingle All the Way. Probably my favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Ugh. One of my favorite Christmas movies. Ugh. Batman and Robin. Well, yeah, here's Mr. Freeze. (laughs) (laughs) Best role. Best role ever. Ever. Should have won an Emmy. (laughs) You don't want any for an actual movie, so he should have been an Oscar. They did. They're like, this shit was so bad. You deserve something, but we don't. Razzies are too good for you. We're gonna give you a TV award for a movie. <laughs> oh man! In the best base. best comic to film adaptation. Arnold the Schwarzenegger. Day, uh, wasn't that bad? If I remember, it wasn't that bad. I remember. Around the world in eighty days. That shit was funny. Um, the rundown. Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. Nobody cared. 
Um, but yeah. We gotta get back to Stephen, Stephen King movies. Back to Stephen King movies. All right. So we have Pet Cemetery in 1989. Yeah, I've seen the original followed by, one. Followed by Graveyard Shift. Nope, I haven't seen it. Uh, Misery. Haven't seen it. I know about it. It's the one. It's the one where seen. she breaks a guy's ankle with the block or whatever, right? Yes, Misery's okay. beautiful. Beautiful. <gasps> um, the Lawnmower Man. And see, okay. Now, when I say I haven't seen these movies, it's I haven't seen them. Like I haven't sat down and watched them start to finish. I can't say that my mom hasn't seen these movies and I haven't seen like bits and pieces of them. Right. You've never turned to them. Like I'm going to watch children of the corn. Like, I, right. I okay. Lawmore man. I know you've seen, we've talked about it. Yes. Um, then there's the dark half. Nope. Which ironically enough is directed by Mr. George A. Romero. Who did Night of the living dead. I was going to say, is it a zombie movie? Dawn of the Dead and Day of the Dead. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, Needful Things, nope. whatever. Shawshank was 1994. The yep. Mangler was 1995. Nope. Dolores Claiborne. Nope. Yeah, that, that that's fine. That I mean, Dolores Claiborne had a had actually 84 percent Rotten Tomatoes. So far, the worst movie on this list. Well, that's 17 percent. That's 13%. Graveyard Shift so far is the worst one at 13%. We'll head to 17%. Maximum Overdrive, you guys are assholes. Maximum no, Overdrive is a fucking classic. Yeah, they don't know what they're talking about. Best movie More like ever. an 83%, 17% <laughs> negative review. Um, anyway, back to beautifulness of that movie. Um, Fenner, which was... I, kn- I know of it. I ha- I've seen scenes of that one. I have not seen the movie. The night, the night flyer. <sighs> Haven't seen that. Um, apt pupil. Nope. The green mile. Oh, I have seen that one. Tom there Hanks and. Uh... Yep. Yep. Hearts in Atlantis. Nope. Uh, Dreamcatcher. That movie was. I actually want that say, movie to be good. I want to say I have seen that movie. I wanted that movie to be good. By the way, that movie grossed seventy five million dollars against a sixty eight million dollar budget, so it was not a successful movie. It they, made money. They still made money, but barely. Like it made money, but not really. Secret window. Oh, is that I the one with Johnny Depp? That is the one with Johnny Depp. I have seen that. I didn't know that was a Stephen King movie. Yep. Based on the novella Secret Window, Secret Garden. Yeah, I actually really like that movie. Uh, 1408. Nope. With Samuel Jackson and... Uh... Fuck, what's his name? Is that John Cusack? Yeah, John Cusack. Nope. The Mist? Nope. Hold on a second. Are you staring at me like that? I just see no. you staring at the camera all of a sudden. No, like... no, 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 no. My, 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 my phone keeps going off, and I want it to stop. Um, but I'm also trying to check something because I want to ask you a little bit of trivia about myself. About you? Uh, oh. my, my movie taste, but I don't know if I ever talked about this movie, but... All right, Webby. It's a 2002 movie, not a horror movie. Name a just it has Christopher Walken in it, but name a movie you think I would was one of my favorite movies of all time. I watch this movie at least once a year. I love this movie. Just throw something out there. It's not a horror movie. It's not even like it's not a comedy. It's not a drama. Just throw it out there. Just take a guess what it could possibly be. Two thousand and two had Christopher Walken. Can and I, it involves a sport. It involves a sport. It is not Balls of Fury. I'll tell you that right now. Can I look up a discog or a filmography of him? So I yes. Can just, okay. So I mean, you, I won't I look mean, up you, his IMDb because that'll have dates on it. Uh, Christopher Walken filmography. Jesus. Why? Why he's doing that? 
going to keep talking about. Oh, man, he was in Batman Returns. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, he was, wasn't he? Eh. Got him cowbell. 2013 Carrie remake. <sighs> A Good Marriage. Mercy. Cell. The Dark Tower. It. Gerard's Game. Or Gerald's Game, not Gerard's Game. Did you happen to watch that on Netflix? Nope. In 1922, that's what I've been meaning to watch on Netflix. Pet Cemetery, <sighs> Chapter Two, In the Tall Grass. I watched that on Netflix. That was pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Looking at like the names of these films and stuff. I mean, he's been in a lot of really good films that I've seen, but none of them are standing out. None of them that I don't think that you've really mentioned or talked a lot about. I may not have mentioned it. The, I can tell you right now the movie was a box office flop. Um, yeah, I don't know. A movie called Pool Hall Junkies. Pool Hall Junkies. That sounds familiar. I feel like I've seen that movie. I love that movie. It has Mars Callahan in it. I don't know why I love that movie as much as I love that movie, but I love that movie. Did that have uh fuck now I gotta IMDB this movie. Let's see if it's the one that I'm thinking of. Um We got some funky chili, man. No, maybe it's not the one I was thinking of. Anyway, anybody out there who wants to watch a movie, I'd recommend it. Has Michael Who's Rosenbaum in it? It does. It does. I forgot he plays his brother. He plays the dude's brother. For for whatever reason, I thought it had um, Jake Gyllenhaal in it. But it, no. I don't see him on this list. So. Let's see. So the television shows, we have Salem's Lot. Nope. It sometimes they come back. The Tommy Knockers. <gasps> Tommy Knocker. Hold on. I think I've seen that. It's a television show. The Tommy Knocker. Came on ABC. Maybe. I don't know. Nineteen ninety uh, sorry, nineteen ninety three. The stand. Uh The Shining was a television series. I forgot about that. Three episode mini series. Was that one better in terms of more faithful than the book? No. One Observer writer called it the worst Stephen King miniseries ever made in 2014. <laughs> so the answer to that question. <laughs> Wait, but who do they get? Ca- if I'm not mistaken, they cast somebody really cool for Scarface. Not Scarface Crothers. Yeah, it was Scarface. Scarface Crothers? No. Scatman Crothers. Scarface Crothers is somebody else. I'm a scat man. We pop up, but no. Um, all right, now I gotta look at who the hell is Scarface Carruthers. Like, now, it's, all now, it's just me, now it's just me and Devin doing a bunch of research on stuff. Is that all, right, who, all dogs go to that? Is my favorite animated movie of all time, by the way. Better than any Disney movie. I don't give a damn. All Dogs Go to Heaven 2. Better than any Disney movie out there. Fight me. Don't give a shit. That's my that's my jam. But um anyway. 1995 was the Langoliers. Uh, 1997 was the Shining. That's so I was looking to see who the hell did they cast as the cast of Cortland Mead. Which I feel like I know this guy. Oh, that was the guy that played Danny. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the guy that played fucking Watcher Girl. So I will say there are there have been a lot more Stephen King movies that I've seen than I thought because I didn't know there were Stephen King movies. Yeah, I'm trying to find what's his name. Yeah, they did definitely do more close to. Melvin Van Pebbles, that was the guy who they played. But yeah, no. um, they definitely did more 
it, even though it was a shit show, they it was more they were more to the book in the miniseries. But okay. then again, they had you know the extra hour and a half to play with. So yeah. Let's see what else we got here. Creep Show, Castle Rock, Mr. Mercedes. I love it. Uh, based on the novelist, Miss Mercedes, Finders Keepers, and End of Watch. Yep. The Mist. Eh. 112263. I got I started watching it. I didn't finish that. I didn't finish that. Under the Dome. Eh. Bag of Bones. Don't remember what they remember at all. So you apparently know, they're doing the outsider. It's coming sometime in twenty twenty. You know what was a good movie? What? Biodome. Okay. I'm just saying. I mean, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Um, you're not wrong. Not a Stephen King movie, though. Yeah. I don't think. Uh, but it might be. I definitely think the next thing we need to do is we need to do Rose Red. We need to sit down and watch Rose Red. Well, you also know, you also told me I had thing. you also told me I had to sit down and watch The Running Man. With Ling- you. Well, Running Man, or the Running Man, Langoliers. Oh my god, you're, Running you're Man. building an awful big list of movies I gotta watch now. I mean, I'm building an awful big list of movies that we can watch for SU content, so it works okay, out. Okay, that's fair. So, I mean, to be fair, I truly... Depends on what you want to do. Running Man is, is completely off horror stuff. Langoliers is not even really horror at this point. Um, close to one that's still kind of horror, we're still kind of close to. Uh, October is probably Rose Red, and I mean to watch it anyway. Um, so if you want, and you that's can a movie, watch Rose Red. Eh, it's a mini series. We have, we have to start that probably like Monday, Monday or Tuesday, and then like watch like a part every for like two or three nights because it's it's 255 minutes long, it's four hours long. <laughs> where is it? Where where do I watch this? I'd I'd have to find it somewhere. Okay, so that means somewhere. our website. I could probably yes. watch it on. Probably, but yeah, it's uh. That it's would be definitely... one that that would be one that I would want to probably. No, no lie, I'd probably want to binge on like a weekend. Yeah, that's something we blow, definitely blow do. through it on a weekend or something. Yeah, that's something we definitely could do. Um, just binge it on a weekend and just like knock it out and then talk about it like the following week. Yeah, we definitely could do. Um, I don't know if it's going to be this weekend, but it doesn't have to be. Yeah, definitely something we could easily do for an episode coming up here in the future. But yeah, I actually appreciate it. I well, actually I'll tell you what. It. Hold on. There's the Langoliers. There's yep. Rose Red. The Langoliers. The Langoliers. We can probably watch in one sitting. Okay, and then there's Rose Red. And then there's Running Man. Okay. So that's uh-huh. that's three movies so far that you have on this list of movies that you mean you need to watch to do yes. an SU on. Let's add one more to that list, and we will just do a Stephen King month. We will just do four back-to-back weeks of essentially Stephen King content. Oh, see, you did Running Man. I'm tempted to just do, since both of these are going to be we should just do shows like Stephen King, like TV shows. We've all seen it, and I don't want to talk about it again. I don't want to put myself through uh, another. At, at the same King time, show. I haven't seen the new it, and I've wanted to. Or it too. I haven't seen it too yet. I mean, that, that's fair, and that's that's relatively pretty much out now at this point. Like you can watch it, right? So I mean, so, and yeah, that, we that, that. that could be one week. That could be one yeah, episode. We could we, we could watch too. it and it too. Like the new if you ones. want, we could. If you want, we could ignore. We could ignore the Running Man for right now. We could do Rose Red, the Langoliers, the original It TV show, and then the new It. And then you could do. We could do a compare and contrast. You know, okay. we could do those two back to back and do a compare and contrast. Okay, that works for me. Yeah. All right. So there you go. That's that's what you guys have to look forward to coming up here um, at. Starting at some point. At some point. Uh, but we you are know running. Because Webby hates Christmas. We're going to do that in December. I'm game. Fuck it. 
It's like, why are you guys talking about Stephen King in December? Shouldn't you guys be talking he, about Christmas stuff? It's like, you don't fucking know me, all right? If you're an actual when, listener and you've listened to any other fucking episodes of SU, especially ones that came around, come out around Christmas time, you'll know I am a fucking Grinch. I fucking hate Christmas. All right, does. Bob so we're fucking not, so, humbug. So we're going to go anti-Christmas. We're going to go and do a Stephen King December. That's right. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna call it Webby's. I, don't, I can't think of something creative right now. Yeah, <laughs> but, we'll, we'll come up with a name of it because I mean we have Spooktober Fest with you know SUs for October and yeah. Um, anyway, but we are running out of the, about the hour mark. Uh, I know Devin had a, a good life lesson with Devin. I also have a life a life lesson with Devin. Be- well, a life lesson because of Devin. Oh, uh, that I'd oh, like that my, I would like to share as well. My life lesson. You you want my life lesson, Webby? Well, it depends. Do you want to give yours first, or do you want me to give my life lesson? You can be- go with yours because first. Because of Devin, I, you can go with yours first, and I'll say what my life lesson was that inspired your life lesson. Okay, so my life lesson because of Devin is if for any reason you're being chased by a killer and you have a weapon in your hand. Don't be a limp wrist bitch. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! The best part of that, that movie. If you, best if part you don't get the movie. reference, watch The Shining. Watch the end of like the end of The Shining with the uh fucking with the, the wife, mom, yeah, the running, wife. the wife or the mom running around. She, she has this knife and, and she's it's, waving like, around her head, head. and it's just uh, like she has this like her wrist is made of jello. And she's just running around with his knife. Like, uh, it's insane. I'm like, she's going to trip and like fall on her face with this damn knife and kill herself on the screen. Like, it's going to happen. Yep. It's pretty funny. All right. So uh, now our are, life are lesson with, with Devin. Like, we're going with the life lesson I had the other day. But just, yeah. Yep. Just, Go for it. I forgot. What was it? Was it I forgot. Was it just give up? <laughs> was that it? Or was it just. It was something along those lines. Or was it failure? Was it talking about failure or was it talking about just giving up? I don't think it was either one of those. Now I don't remember. Well, I know I spun that off into the impassioned speech, like the impassioned two personal speech of like the high school coach giving it like, you're all fucking losers anyway. It doesn't, nothing matters. Uh, I spun that off. Anyway, people, the point of what I'm saying is um, my life lesson is just get over yourself. There you go. Yep. Just, just get over yourself. You're not that great. That's what it was. Yeah, you're, you're not that great. You're not that great. <laughs> you're yeah. not that special. No. And that's okay. I'm not special. You're not special. Nobody's special. It's fine. Like, you listen, know, listen. Th- uh, this like, this episode like, goes out like to that one day. Kid. Your mom sat you down and you looked at your mom and you said, "I want to be an astronaut." And your mom knew that your dumbass was never going to be an astronaut. And she said, you're right. That was my mom. (laughs) You're absolutely right. You're going to be an astronaut. And you kind of are. You're working at Astro Burger, flipping those (laughs) cosmic fries. But you're not the astronaut you wanted to be. But that's okay. We don't need a world of astronauts. We, We need that guy that's working at Astro Burger, serving up those Astro fries. It's okay to be that guy. Just own it. It's fine. It's fine. And stop lying to your kids. Some kids out there, they're just fucking dumb. Yep. It's okay to be a dumb kid. You yeah. have a dumb kid. And people, stop showing me pictures of your ugly ass baby. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but if they want to send pictures of their ugly ass babies to you, Devin, where can they send them on the internet? I do not take pictures of ugly ass babies. <laughs> I feel like that is just a that's a, that's a rabbit hole that can go real south real fast we're not doing that <laughs> because the sooner or later the fbi will show up and they'll be I mean, like sponsored by why, the FBI. why you got all these pictures of these ugly ass babies See, on your twitter thing. if your baby is also chubby but ugly it's a pass like chubby ugly is cute but you can't just be ugly like, just be an ugly baby if you're uh, like a chubby ugly I baby i don't fine. know okay no i hold on i have to get something off my chest here Devin. this is something that <laughs> This, is, this has impassioned Webby. No, okay, we're gonna get real here for a minute. This is this is honestly this is how Webby's I feel. Like, look, Devin, look, 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 listen. I was right. an ugly baby. No, <laughs> I mean, I no, I really. Well, I mean, hold on. Now that I have you on camera, I'm I'm gonna let you decide. 
Hold on, you ready for this? Yeah. You were an adorable baby. That's me and Pops. Not going to lie, you did kind of resemble Paul Rudd in that picture a little bit. Really? A little bit. All right. <laughs> All right, no, I'm going to get real with you for a minute. And people people who really do, like, they know me, I, I've said this a million times, and I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm past the point of, like, lying to people about it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this, Devin. Okay, I don't. I think all babies look like aliens, all of them, That's every fine. single That's one, uh, to the point where, please, don't show me a picture of your child and say, "Isn't my child adorable?" I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to say your child looks like an alien. I don't mean that to be disrespectful. I don't mean that to be malicious. It's to me, your child looks like an alien. All children look like aliens to me when they're infants, when they're when they're really little. Like once they get to like the three years old mark, you know, and they're walking around and stuff, children are adorable. You know, they start coming out with words and you can teach them how to say fuck and really piss off their parents. Yeah. You know, but when you're like still in like the the like the infant stage, your baby looks like an alien. Okay, there's nothing cute about it. <laughs> Period. I'm done. That there was my go. that was my rant. Um. So yeah, don't send pictures to me, obviously, of your alien baby. Uh, I'll be calling Area 52, and they'll be coming in. Area and taking 52, it. not not 51. He, no, he Area 52. Uh, yeah, no, this is a different one. They only take babies. They take baby oh, aliens. Okay. Okay. Alien babies. All right, I'm down. Um, but yeah, this episode of SU for all you for all you listeners out there, if you know, if if you've thought throughout your life that there was something about you that really made you special and really made you stand out separate from everybody else. You're not (laughs) get over yourself. You're assholes. (laughs) It's true, but we're assholes. No, we love, we love you listeners. And I'm really glad that you absolutely 100% love you guys. Yeah. I'm I'm really happy that you guys take the time out to download and listen to us. Just talk about random shit every week. Every every now and again, you 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 just need that wake up call. It, it's fine. <laughs> it's that harsh reality slap across the face. Like, oh, you're right. I'm not fucking special. Shit. Like, no, you're not at all. But on the flip side, you're special to me and Devin. Yes. Because let's be honest, there's like twelve of you out there who listen to the show. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> And that's probably uh, being generous as far as the listenership a little bit. A little bit. Hey, we still got those listeners in Kenya and Australia. We do. I get it's insane when I look at the downloads and stuff from like the various places of like people that listen to us. It's like, wow, I don't know why you're listening to us, but thank you. <laughs> uh, so shout out to Kenya and all the Kenyan listeners or the listener that's downloaded that many times in Kenya. Uh, send us an email, simply unprofessional at gmail dot com. Uh, Devin, if they want to reach out to you, where do they reach out to you at? You guys can find me on Twitter at dmp underscore pookie and on Twitch at pook killed me. And on eBay. And as always on eBay, you can find me on eBay at here's Johnny. Here's Johnny. You guys can follow me on Twitter at Jacks Forest Walker, all one word. On Twitch at dm webby. Uh, on Instagram at patrick.webster52, where I post random memes and funny pictures. Um, and on eBay at your ugly alien baby. <laughs> your ugly ass <laughs> alien baby. <laughs> your ugly ass alien baby. Uh, so thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. Uh, leave us some messages and comments on what you thought about The Shining. And. Uh, feel free to make fun of me at how long it took me to actually watch the damn thing to begin with. And until next time, everybody, remember, fuck Booster Gold. Fuck Booster Gold. Down, down, down. Oh, you're like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I was like, why?
Why do you feel like that? It's the outro music, me. Ba-da-ba-da.